What's up, cash flow contractors? Khalil here. We've got another great episode to help you find less stress, more time, and more money in your business. This episode is about one of the most important documents you can create for your business and will really set you apart from your competitors. And that is the Ultimate Buyer's Guide. If you're not familiar with the Ultimate Buyer's Guide, we've referenced it in several episodes in the past, but we're going to dive deep into it today. And We've got actually a resource for you if you want an outline of this ultimate buyer's guide that will really help you get started on creating your own. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, it's down in the show notes. You'll find a link there where you can subscribe. Just enter your email and your name and you will receive a copy of this outline that'll get you started on creating your own ultimate buyer's guide, a living, breathing document that will answer all of your customer questions, guide them through the process of working with you and actually be a resource for not only sales, but also for marketing and support. So check it out. It's a great episode we got coming up. Subscribe to our newsletter down in the show notes and we'll get you a copy of the outline. Take a listen. Less stress, more time, more money. Welcome to the Cash Flow Contractor. Deep Dive. Martin, what were you doing? I think I've asked you this question about a year ago, but what are you, what were you doing at the age of 32? Wow. Where were you? Huh. It's 38 years ago. I think wow. I had just moved. No, I was running grain elevators in Nebraska. That's what okay. I was doing. Buying and selling corn, soybeans, wheat, and milo. Loading it out. You know who's going to be, this will this will date the podcast, but you know who's going to be running uh, grain elevators uh, soon is Deion Sanders. What? They play Nebraska this weekend. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. Man, <laughs> well, I'm a Nebraska fan. Them. Well, I thought, I'm a, I'm, Lived in Nebraska, of course. I just said that. And I am a Nebraska yeah. fan. Uh, the only team I put above them is Oklahoma. But, man, they've been gone for 20 years. And there's a big question, can you ever get it back? Because they got the fan base. They've got everything. Last week they, they played so uh, much. Minnesota. And I thought they had done it. And last five minutes they fumbled and they came down and kicked the field goal. And I don't – this would be – it's close, but not probably right on. Nebraska. Yeah. In the last two years, has lost, had lost 13 of 15. So now it's 14 of 16 games by one score or less. And it looks like the voodoo's going on. So it's yeah. crazy. And did, I don't know if, did you watch the Colorado game too? I didn't watch it, but I, I was driving. Yeah. It's pretty remarkable to, to see what uh, Deion Sanders has Deion, done at Colorado. Yeah. Like, to to take a program that was one and eleven and remove ninety five percent of the players on the team and then bring in that many new players, like eighty plus new players hey, into a program. First time starters. Yeah. And then to get well to get those to get those guys to only have six penalties and to win a game against, yeah. you know, national runner up. Like yeah. that's a big culture culture shift for sure and that's, like, that's i can't imagine trying to do that at a company try to bring in 80 people 80 plus people try to get them all on the same page uh run new you know new systems new processes create the culture and the values and all that stuff and then execute at a high level Whew. that's tough unbelievable yeah yeah well i want to jump into this episode pretty quickly i don't know how i would transition that I asked you your, I, I turned 32 tomorrow. Um, so that's why I asked you that oh, question. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, this episode will be, I'll be 32 by this time this airs. Yeah. Well, I'll probably remember it when Facebook goes ding and I'll send you a very nicely worded post for your Facebook page. And I'll check it in a couple months when I log into Facebook every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, that's why I asked that. Then we started talking about football. I don't know how it segues, but we're talking about 
an ultimate buyer's guide. And I first worked on this with a company called Green Oaky. Um, what was it? Four years ago now? Something like that. Uh, maybe five years ago. And it was a really big endeavor. It took us about a year and it's, it's an, this is an ever living doc. I mean, it's a ongoing document, a living and breathing document. And, um, man, it took a lot, but the goal really that we set out to do is, man, how can we educate our potential customers and customers on anything and everything related to not only our company and our products, but our industry and what it's like to, to work with our industry uh, as a whole. And man, it was, it's pretty fascinating. But I, I think having that ultimate buyer's guide really changed the way that customer, it changes the way that you're able to interact with customers during the sales process and the support process. But it also is one of the best training documents you can give to a salesperson or even a support person inside your company. And is even something that I would hand to every employee at onboarding. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thought of, on the ultimate buyer's guide. I sent you this outline yesterday. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on this? Well, I, I think it's a, a great idea. The more information that they get, uh, one thing I like about the way you specifically have it written is, uh, you, you have questions and, and, uh, what, how do you word it? Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, so yeah, yeah pressing questions, the good, bad, and the ugly things that go right, things that can go wrong. So you're educating them about things that they want to know about, even if they don't know yet that they want to know about. You're also mm -hmm. talking about things like the industry and the company that they may want to know about, but they might not. So they, yeah. they've got information in there and they've got more information if they're interested. So yeah, yeah. it's a great, uh, great outline for people to think through the process. Um, well, and we'll go through this outline step by step. And if anybody wants to get this outline so that they can start working on themselves, we had a newsletter for about two years and we didn't get a lot of subscribers on it and we never really promoted it. So in an effort to kind of get that up and going again and get get CFC into people's inboxes and grow that side of uh, the cash flow contractor, anybody who subscribes to the cash flow contractor will receive this outline and we'll get it over to you. And it's a really incredible starting point for getting your ultimate buyer's guide written um, and taking it step by step. And uh, it's it's a huge, huge value there. So. Um, yeah, go subscribe to us in the show notes or go to our website and subscribe. But moving on, let's let's jump into it. So in terms of, you know, framing the ultimate buyer's guide, I think it's helpful for people to understand what if you just went through your process? And a cha a challenge that I see a lot of people think about with their customers and their process of working with a customer, it's it's so long-winded. It's like we have you know this call and then we go back and we do this as a team and then we have this meeting with you and then we get drawings done and uh, oh yeah we also got the measurements done before that and then we go and we meet with you know the designer and then um, you know we have to go and order materials and we wait on the materials and then we do an inventory check I mean all these different steps that go along in the process. And that's a good thing. Like you should have a very clear outline of what your process is from start to finish of working with a customer. But for the customer's sake, it needs to be a little bit more simplified. And so I think one of the great things that you can do inside of the ultimate buyer's guide is go through that entire process, that long winded, super detailed step by step by step process. Maybe it's 10 steps, maybe it's 50 steps. Who knows how long you're doing it internally. Go through that, but then start to segment those steps into the, you will treat those as sub steps and have three to four major steps. And those are typically like, you know, customer gives us a call or fills out a form. We have a design meeting. We get to work on building it. 
and or we get to work on installing you it. deliver drawings for approval yeah something like that and then you're ready to go and so you have those major steps that if i have a customer i can look at that four three or four step process and be like oh wow it's so easy and then you can go through on your ultimate buyer's guide and you can detail hey in step one of us having this meeting here's everything that's actually going to be happening on the on the back end and what it actually looks like with all of these sub steps. Um, and then in your ultimate buyer's guide, you know, we said this is a living, breathing document, but it's also an extensive document. Um, it aims to be comprehensive, although it is continually being added and revised, uh, added to and revised. But this should be a, whenever it's said and done, it could be easily a 50 to 100 page document, uh, PDF that someone looks through. Um, Obviously, you can have shorter versions, and we'll get to that later. But going through, you should have a full overview page of what the three major, four major steps are that then maybe list some of the sub steps. And then you should have a, a step or a, a page for each major step with all the sub steps, and then a page for each sub step itself that then details everything that's going on during that stage of the process. And then frequently asked questions for each sub step. And if you, if you just even have that done, uh, the entire process of working with us, that's a really detailed document that's going to answer so many of the questions that your customers throw at you and give them a peace of mind of understanding truly what it looks like to work with you. And then if you send that to everybody inside your company or a new employee, they're going to have a really good idea of what it's like to work at your company as well. And I don't, I don't think there's enough people that have just that process uh, document in place. What do you think? Well, uh, no, there are not. They're, they're very rare. I'm thinking while you're talking there, I, when I talk to people about systems, people say, well, how can I systemize that? It's all in my head. And say, well, you, Mr. or Mrs. Owner, are going through a process, and you've done it hundreds of times, likely, just think through what it is I'm doing here and bullet point it and get it down on paper and tell people about it. It's a benefit to your customer because they see what the process is. It's a benefit to the people who work for you because they understand what's expected of them. If you're promising one thing and your crew's delivering something else. So, but the benefit of this, I think is education. And again, it makes you the pro. We talked about yeah. that in our, when we talked about blogging makes you the authority and the pro and you've laid it all out for them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's something that is in your head typically as the business owner or the leader or manager of your company. Um, and it, it exists. There's a process in place, whether you've been intentional about it or not. And going through this process will even make you more intentional about the steps and subsets that are existing inside your company and, and working with you. Uh, and it, it, when you have it written down, it allows you to actually make revisions and be intentional about making it the best process possible. Um, and you know, there's so many companies out there that their process is their secret sauce. It is their unique value proposition that separates them from everybody in the, in the industry because they've honed it so well. It's such a, it's, it's streamlined, it's efficient, a well-oiled machine that will just do the it, it is the magic for them. Um, and so if you are able to go through that with your company, maybe that can become one of your differentiators as well. Um, I want to go through some of the other things that are also in here because that's that in itself is a great exercise and a great document to have internally and externally. But, you know, we, we had an episode just recently about expectations, more or less. And this will set, this document will set so many of the expectations for your customer and for working with you. And we've actually, what was this? What was the, I forget, you didn't talk about the company, but there was a builder that had the expectations document with their subcontractors. Do you remember what I'm talking about, Martin? Oh yeah. I don't have it on my desk. I know where it you is. You called it a positioning, but, but you called it a positioning uh, it, document. Yeah. It, it said, this is what you can expect from us. You know, our jobs will always be ready on time. No callbacks yeah. or dry runs. We'll pay you on the 15th of every month if you give us the invoice by this. Anyway, it laid out what we do. Then yep. it said what we expect from you. 
And yep. there are a number of things, but the one I liked the most was do your own inspections. Do not rely on us to do QC. I yep. mean, that one was great. No, we're not coming in there. We find a bunch of problems after you QC the job. That's on you, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so it lays out the expectation. Well, I think that's basically what this is. You're, you're the expectation section of your ultimate buyer's guide should cover everything that you want to expect from your customer, but also that your customer can expect from you in terms of behavior. Communication is a huge one of how long it's going to take to hear back from you, to get a reply, what channels to be communicating on, if it's email, text, phone call, um, all those different things, payment, contracts, changes to the job, errors on the job, interruptions to the job, just everything that you can think of that you want to set some ground rules for is in this section. And then there's questions that come along with that. And it should be on both sides from you to the homeowner or to the, the, the customer and from the homeowner to you, what are the expectations? Again, just having that in place doesn't have to just be in the ultimate gut buyer's guide that can be in your contracts. It can be in your, your marketing. Uh, it can be on your, your first sales call just as a separate document. These are the expectations that we have. Uh, and again, just going through that exercise is super beneficial. Yeah. On, on that for an internal use, uh, it was occurring to me this morning, but I start with a company that has been around a while. It does have processes and they're seldom written down. Just so-and-so knows how to do this. Somebody else knows how to do that. But when we're starting to map them, I think of a, I've got an eight foot whiteboard in my conference room. You just draw a horizontal line across that and say, we got to start somewhere and let's start with an fo- inbound phone call or a form, right? Yeah. We, we could start with marketing, but I'm not going to do that. We just start there and then just ask them what happens next. I've got a yeah. phone call. What happens next? You know, is it going to the CRM? Does it go to somebody? Do you, do they get an automatic reply? Anyway, as you march across the page or across the that line with people saying, well, the next thing is it's got to go to purchasing. No, the next thing it's got to go to engineering. You know, whatever it is, people will start seeing where they're duplicating efforts and where things are going forward and then going back. Anyway, you'll start to see things you can begin design. So that's not a huge benefit to the buyer directly other than if you're a better company, you're going to be a better experience. But that is a great way to flesh out the buyer's guide, but also to understand your systems and processes and getting it started and being organized. Yo, let's take a break really fast. I just want to remind all of our listeners, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment on this episode, asking questions about the ultimate buyer's guide or giving any feedback you have for us. If you're on Apple or on Spotify, you can subscribe and follow our show. Even leave us a review. We would love five stars. And then if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, like I've already mentioned several times already in this episode, we'd love to have you in our email list where you'll receive a weekly email about each of our episodes straight to your inbox, really brief and concise. And we'll give you even some clips from the episode that you can watch uh, in lieu of watching the whole episode. So Please do those things, all the things to help support and grow our show. We love doing it for listeners like you, and we'd appreciate your continued support. Now back to the Ultimate Buyer's Guide. So let's keep running through this um, next section that you can have in here. uh, And this is a really great section for your website, for blog articles, um, for any other type of content, but it's the pressing questions that come up when you're working with a customer. And these are the ones that are, you know, you need to have readily available because you get asked so much. I, I'm saying pressing questions on this and not frequently asked questions because something about an ultimate buyer's guide is you always have frequently asked questions for each, each section. Um, the frequently asked questions about the design process, about the install process, about, um, you know, getting in contact with you. There's always gonna be frequently asked questions for each section, but what are the most pressing questions that people have when working with you? Questions about warranties and guarantees, about how to about materials, about how to use the software where you input your information or the program to communicate with you on. Um, 
any questions that you get right away from prospects, these are the pressing questions. And again, if you just had these detailed and written out inside of an article for each one, whenever someone asks you that question, you could just shoot them an article from this section um, and they wouldn't have to dig it up in the ultimate buyer's guide. But those pressing questions, having answers to those can save you so much time as a business owner where you're not having to answer it all the time via an email or on the phone, just sending it over in a quick blurb or in an article um, or pointing them to the buyer's guide is super helpful. So getting those outlined in a generic format for your company is really great. You mentioned this next section, Martin, earlier, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is just everything that you know makes a successful project great to what uh, a working relationship look like can look like if it's great. And even what it looks like when it's really bad, if there's a poor experience, why, what happens, what can be wrong? You know, if you're a home, if you're a pool builder, this can be the, Hey, we are going to destroy your sprinkler system. That is the ugly, right? right. Like it, you can expect that it's going to happen. And here's why, you know, and it's something also that we're not responsible for. We have some great peers in the industry who work on sprinklers. If you need someone to fix it. You know, if you want them to come in after the fact, but it ju it's going to happen, right? Or the gas line, or if you're the kitchen remodeler, hey, there's going to be a lot of dust going on for about a week while we're doing demolition. Um, but we'll clean it up. But just know that you're not going to be able to, you know, this, this comes back to a recent episode. I had spray foam insulation inside my house. I wish that they <laughs> would have said, hey, you, you really, can't be in there. you're not going to be able to be home for 24 hours, maybe even 48 hours. And here's why. Um, we're not going to pay for you to go to a hotel. <laughs> you, you, you've got to, you've got to find somewhere else to stay. And it's for the safety of you and your family. And I'm, as long as I know that I'm completely okay with it. If, as long as I understand that that's part of it, that's kind of the ugly side of it. But let's, let's, I'm going to just run through these really fast of just things that can go inside this section. You can cover all the goals that homeowners have for projects and how you can help them achieve those, the misconceptions that they have about the type of projects that you work on and how you can help them uh, educate them on what is the truth there, what challenges that they're going to run into with types of projects, whether it's working with you or someone else and how to overcome those, the mistakes that they might make and how you'll help them avoid them, the obstacles that you'll, that they'll run into with projects <laughs> like yours and how to navigate those obstacles the disappointments that they might have during the project or after the project and how you can really set those expectations that kind of fits the, you know, destroying the sprinklers or having to leave the home for 48 hours. Um, the best practices for homeowners on these types of projects, everything from, you know, reviewing bids to, you know, choosing your materials and colors on time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All those different <laughs> things. Right. Um, how to choose the best contractor for your project, what to look for, what questions they should be asking, what should they should be, how they should be communicating, uh, those kinds of things. Comparing apples to oranges when reviewing contractor quotes, teaching them basically how to look at a quote and really understand what it's saying. Um, contractor red flags and green flags that are red flags and green lights that they should look for. Defining what a successful looks like from the customer at, and the contractor perspective. Here's what the ideal project is and put in a narrative format for them so that it feels real. Uh, and then defining what a terrible project looks like so they understand what success and failure looks like for, on their end. Um, outlining the benefits uh, for the homeowner and in, in investing this project, increase in property value, increase in happiness levels and how they spend their time. Just outline all the benefits that the homeowner is gonna receive by investing in this project. And then also some of the cons that may um, go into place that might be something like the sprinkler that we talked about, but it could also, you know, you're installing a pool in the backyard. There's less space to run around now, um, you know, cover those things that they may not be thinking about. Um, yeah, the good, the bad, the ugly. Again, so much of the ultimate buyer's guide can be pulled out and repurposed for something else. If you took all of these sections and had written them out inside your ultimate buyer's guide, that could 100% be your content strategy for blogging, for video creation, for social media posts, for, and a lot of this stuff is evergreen. It's not timely. It's not like you're posting for Christmas, 
So it can be used over and over and over and over again to create content to post out on your uh, social media channels and whatnot. So uh, probably my favorite section and probably the, the most in-depth section in this buyer's guide. I was just looking for the word change orders in your list. I didn't see it yet. <laughs> that needs to go in there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it should. And I, I think even that can fit into pressing questions or uh, the expectations of change orders as well. But yeah, there's definitely going to be overlap as you're going through the uh, the buyer's guide. Uh, I'm going to just briefly touch on the rest of these. Um, you can have your material options in here. This can basically almost roughly be a catalog if you want to and include it in here. Um, you can have your pricing inside of here, everything from how you do price changes or change orders um, to what causes your project to uh, a project to increase in price or to decrease in price, when payment occurs and how, tips for staying within uh, the budget, finding it, financing options if you provide those to customers, um, the impact to the value of their home, um, any FAQs that relate to that. Then you can get into add-ons for maybe a maintenance contract for, you know, that's if you're a pool builder, you want to do ongoing service for that pool, how they can get access to that. Um, any complimentary services, maybe you do pools, but you also do pergolas. Um, what things might also fit into yeah. that landscaping, um, any premium features that they can add, like they want to get a slide built, added onto their pool, um, use and care tips for, this is where you can include warranty, material care tips, regular maintenance needs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then from there, I think you should include your referral program inside the ultimate buyer's guide. If you don't have a referral program, get one in place. But talk about the rewards you can have, like gift cards or free add-ons if you go above a certain amount in project value or um, ongoing service deals. If you sign up for the service deal uh, with us, we'll get your six, first six months free if you build a new pool with us. Um, but yeah, project, you, know, you can, I think a good thing with the referral system is always to gamify it somehow based upon you know, the project value for their project. If it goes over a hundred thousand dollars, then you'll do X, Y, Z. Um, if they have three referrals, then you'll add that by a project. You'll do a full remodel of their, um, outdoor kitchen or I don't know, whatever you want to do, but think of different things that you can kind of gamify where it's like, Oh, if I hit three or if I do two of these, if I leave a review on three different channels, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, then I'll get a new floaty for my pool or whatever. <laughs> um, and of course we can't talk about that because you're not supposed to do it. You're not Paying supposed for to, reviews. everybody does. <laughs> yeah, it does yeah. happen, but we're officially um, on record. We're officially on record saying that we cheat the system. Yeah. Now, I, th I think those are, uh, having a referral program isn't there a great one. And then you know, obviously the, in the close of it, you want to have all your contact info and legal insurance license details, um, and then even a call to action for working together. But these are, this is the ultimate buyer's guide in a nutshell. What, it, what do you feel like are the, what's the value to, um, the customer of receiving this document at the front end? Like what, it, what would you feel if contractor comes over, does the sales process, Hey, I'm ready to talk whenever you uh, have questions, but this is our ultimate buyer's guide and it covers everything you could ever think about with our business. And if you find something that's not covered in there, if you can't find something that's not covered, let me know so I can add it to it. <laughs> you know, I mean, what is the the sentiment that you have as the customer? Well, my, uh, my thoughts and is one word and this word applies to everything in business, whether you're dealing with customers, employees or what, uh, clarity. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you can hand something to this to like a, or a contract that has details and, and it's very clear and it's not clear when the problem arises to the customer didn't remember that, but you have the document and yeah. you can say, well, this is what it says. You know, we have to have a same giant signed change order before we do any work. I, I can just think of example after example where people did changes without a change order or a process. And wound up getting stiff for it. Well, I didn't understand that. Or you said, I know that's a particular example out of here, but that's the kind of clarity that can, 
that can uh, save big bucks in the end and big misunderstanding and a sour experience with a customer. So clarity yeah. is the biggest thing. Just, yeah, this, this is how it works. I, I think it's, I think it's clear, uh, but it's also something that can reach so many different parts of your interactions with customers on the sales side, on the marketing side, on the service side, anytime you're interacting with someone external, you're going to be able to use this document, uh, for marketing purposes, especially you can pull anything out of this and turn it into some sort of right. marketing asset. Um, but then also on the sales side, if you have this document in place and you need to hire a salesperson, they can study this front to back and be able to do any kind of sales job for you. You know, they, they can sell a job and answer questions for a customer pretty efficiently. Um, and then on the service side, you have some, when entering customer support, they, they can start, there's probably other things that they need, but this is a great starting point for understanding how things work. So right. it's, it's more than just a guide for the customer. It's a guide for you internally, um, for you and your team and, uh, can dictate a lot of things that go on in your company. And I, I think it's a huge value. One thing I will say, uh, that I thought was really interesting can't remember the name of this company. It was a foundation repair company in Nebraska. Maybe we had that. We were talking about Nebraska earlier. They've come back up, um, but they have a, they have a document similar to this and, and they don't call it ultimate buyer's guide, but it's something very similar and it's printed out that they hand out, hand out to customers. It's thick, but before they will go on a, um, a, a, a go to the customer's home, before they go to the customer's home uh, for a meeting, the customer will have had to watch a video that's 30 minutes long, mandatory. And it the video basically covers almost everything inside the ultimate buyer's guide, not everything, but the really important stuff, especially on setting expectations. Um, and it has in, increased their in, uh, conversion rate like 5x yeah. because they're only going to meetings that are qualified meetings. Nobody's, if somebody hasn't watched that video, they're not, they're not going to waste their time going in to, to try to sell the job. But if they've watched that video, they know it's the right type of meeting, but then also the person's prepped to feel so much more comfortable working with them because they've spent 30 minutes already with them and they understand they have the clear expectations going into it. And so something, having something like this in place allows you to go and record that 30 minute video that educates the person exactly on what they're about to step into and gives you the option to be so much, so much more, uh, professional and confident and clear and, uh, just have a, a much better conversion rate with that, with that customer. All right, everybody. What a wonderful episode. Really great to talk about the ultimate buyer's guide. If that's something that you're interested in, again, you can get the outline by subscribing to our newsletter. And then also we'd love any feedback you have on our content. We can fill out a form. We've got a Google form down in the show notes or the description on YouTube where you can fill it out really briefly and give us some feedback. Also, we've got our emails for both Martin and myself inside the description and show notes of this episode. Please send us an email. We'd love to hear from you and topics that you want us to cover on our show. Never hesitate to reach out. Thank you for being a part of our audience, for all of your support and listening to our show. We hope that you're finding less stress, more time, and more money in your business. Have a good week. Thanks for listening to The Cashflow Contractor. Check out our website in the show notes or visit thecashflowcontractor.com.